Um, so what, what I was thinking, I don't know how you guys think about this as like a flow through for today is I just kind of thought we could go through the quiz questions at the beginning and end of each chapter because theoretically he says in the book if we understand the answers to those questions we understand the chapter <laughs> so i thought we could go through them and discuss um and then we can also look at like specific exercise problems oh, that's good as an idea yeah i also went through the exercises again and just wrote down which ones i did not completely understand so um yeah with all the other ones i can help and these um <laughs> i don't know <laughs> um, let's see let's give it a few minutes i guess yeah One other question that I stumbled upon, are you um, working with Markdown as well, R Markdown? I just started using it. Um, okay. Because I'm, I was wondering when you start a new file, but you want to have your headings um, start at, for example, three and not at one, if you know how to do that. But... Uh, what, do you, what do you want? Like in an R Markdown file, um, if you start with your headings um, mm -hmm. with the hashtag, but you don't want it to be one, but two, for example. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, you write two, and you write the heading. You so you need you can you need to number it the way you want. If you don't want it, uh, number it automatically. So when, for instance, you want a particular heading to start with two, then you write the heading two and the title and you you open the open braces um i think let me, let me see that if i can you open braces and dash inside the open braces um let me see if i can show you how so you don't just use the the hashtags then but something yeah, like an html yeah. um writing no no, oh, no. Okay. You, you use the h you use, you use the hashtag that, okay, so what do you want is like you don't want the art markdown to automatically number your headings, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, start, start not at one, but at a different number, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, what you need to do, like the way you write it normally in art markdown, you write the hash, maybe one or two hash, depending on the uh, what you want. But mm -hmm. in this case, um, you after the hash, you type the number you want to appear and write the title and at the end of the title you open braces double braces and put um something like uh, if i can share my <laughs> because i often one document i've seen that if i can share my screen yeah let me share my screen <laughs> it's a bit off topic but <laughs> can, you, can you see my screen yeah can you see what i'm showing right now here mm -hmm. so here can you see this one so whatever i write here it will for instance i can write 2.1 or 2 so this will show number two or this i will number this number three and put this so this uh, in particular this one in particular this thing is the one that does not allow our markdown to automatically number your headings uh, okay cool yeah thank you <laughs> Uh, yeah okay i'll try that the next time then thank you <laughs> i just asked a question and realized i was on mute whoops <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, no one's responding. <laughs> um, do we want to start? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just made it as like one of these, um, basically I just made a slideshow of all the like quiz questions and then the answers on the next slide. 
rather than us having to flip through the PDF. So I'm just sharing that. I don't know if it's, <laughs> I thought it might be easier like to start with. Um, so this was the ones from names and values, uh, which I presented. So given following data frame, how do we create a new column called three, which contains the sum of one and two. Um, so do we know how to make data frames with like funky names? Uh, it was just with the backticks, right? So you used the yeah. uh, dollar sign backtick three backtick and then yeah. assign the thing. Um, how much memory does Y occupy? Oh my gosh. Um, it's less than we expect because it's a list and we can get it with what? Lobster vmem? Is that it? Lobster. Lobster Abshmem, I think, it's, and it's less than we expect, less than x three times because it's just a uh, stirring the pointers three times. Yeah, it's basically the same as x plus a little bit that's occupied by the list itself. But I think it's obj size. Obj size, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just peeked in my in my results. <laughs> lobster. What is it lobster? Ob yeah, obshize, I think does it. Um, on which line does A get copied? Whoops. Um, sorry, nothing. Go away. Um, let's see. It's getting copied on three, right? Yeah, because in the second line is just accessing the same A and then um, three, it's modified and then copied on modify. We did it, we understand chapter two. <laughs> I thought it was all the quiz question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it for chapter two. I mean, I didn't do all the exercise questions. I thought that would be insane. Um, did, I didn't have any of the exercise written down as complicated for this either. Did you, if you went through them all? Um, in two, I had, uh, wait, I had two and 2.53. Yeah, I'm just bringing up the thing again. Um, I don't know, these are the solutions. <laughs> Yeah, I have, uh, so the first was explaining why the following code doesn't create a circular list. And then it's like X is an empty list. And then the first element of X should be X. I think, I think it is. Um, sorry, uh, Aaron, uh, sorry for asking question. I'm like, um, which chapter, because last two weeks I didn't attend the session. So what, did, which chapter? Are you guys in? Uh, it's chapter two. So we're just starting from the top and then kind of going downwards. Uh, okay, chapter two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, explain why the following code doesn't create a circular list. So from my understanding, the only thing that can um, contain itself is an environment, but I feel like we wouldn't know that already in chapter two. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we do learn that. It's one of the it's one of the things they tell us about like things as a special rule. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, that lists cannot contain yeah, yeah. themselves yeah. or something like that. List. Data frames, characters, exercises. It definitely says somewhere in here that the only thing that can contain itself is an environment. Um, but I don't remember where it tells us that. Modify in place. Yeah, but I guess then it's probably modify in place, and then environments. Um, take this environment uh, exercises. Why doesn't the list create a circular list? Because only an environment can contain itself. That makes sense. Yeah. Actually, cool. Can we do that. I didn't. I don't even think I evaluated that code. Um. 
Lobster. I did evaluate it. And it, it is possible to evaluate it, but... Um, yeah. Object, what is it? Oh my gosh. Add a ref. Uh, oh yeah, it's ref. 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 Does that show us anything? Um, so yeah, it just created basically another list. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm binding in the garbage collector. Was that was that it? Did you have a? Another? Yeah, also the second question here, but I think it's not super important. I think it's not That's necessary it. to understand them. How does performance change as the number of columns increase? My guess is this is where they're trying to show you that you shouldn't do things in loops because of the copy on modify aspect. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the main point that you should get out of it, right? So um, I think I, I just didn't put too much effort into understanding this, understanding what they want us to do with the bench package. But I guess the main point is not use for loops. <laughs> solutions. This is 2.5. Oh, no, it hasn't been edited to have 2.5 yet. Oh, no, here it is. <laughs> um, so have you used bench before? I I tend to use Microbench, rather, but it's just a benchmarking ah. platform. So it's like a it's a little package that allows you to benchmark like a function, for example. I don't understand. What does a bench what do? Um, what it'll do, depending on how I haven't used this one exactly, but it's timing how long it takes to do something. So what you can do uh, is create two functions, for example, okay. and each of these is faster. Um, okay. I assume this is, or it's testing across a range of grids. Um, so yeah, unsurprisingly, it goes massively upwards. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, okay, so chapter three vectors. Um, what are the four common types of atomic vectors? And what are the two rare types? That's a number. <laughs> <laughs> Character. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's like date. Isn't there like yeah. a date, date type? Uh, but date I, type, I is, date is, some... it, is it not within the rear? What are the two rear types? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I forget. <sighs> what is a rare? It is something that's built on top of the atomic vectors with attributes. I think so. The atomic vectors are uh, logical. Is also one of them. Logical. logical. Yeah, logical. 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 Character. Numeric. Character and. But numeric is integer and do du double. Oh yeah. Double. Board. In double yeah, I think that, that, and then the rare is like, yeah. I feel like it's date. It's related to date or something like that. Okay, let's see. It's raw and complex. <laughs> They're so rare we forgot about them. <laughs> yeah. Okay, attributes. They're like ephemeral things, right? That go and come whenever you change the vector. Is my memory because I remember being like confused about why would I ever use an attribute? It's so easily going away again, right? <laughs> I asked this actually in the um, channel, and someone said it's maybe something to just be aware of because I guess a lot of these stats packages store information in attributes. So I think like if you do like LM for linear model or something. Some of the results you're getting back are stored as attributes on the object it returns to you. So maybe it's like, I, I interpreted that when I was reading that as like one of these things in R that's like not really used anymore, but has been around since the beginning of the language's inception. And like, maybe we should use different things. That's, that's what I interpreted. I think you set them and get them with like attributes, right? Like ATR bracket. 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think there's also different ways, right? Yeah, I think there were as well. There was somehow a way to set a bunch of them and then a way to just set a single yeah, one. I do it as a list, like, yeah. Uh, how is a list different from an atomic vector? How is a matrix different from a data frame? Um, so a list just contains pointers. And I think data frames are lists, are, they're lists of vectors, right? Yeah, because you can also have in a data frame a column that's then a matrix or something. So yeah. it's like a list. And I think matrices have to be a single type, right? Because I've, I've had this. Yeah, and this the same with um, atomic vectors, right? They have to be yeah. a single type and lists you can have different types. Yep, yep. Can you have a list that is a matrix? Okay. Yes. It is a matrix. I mean, I guess you could have a list of one thing and that one thing inside of it is a matrix. Is that being? Uh, that definitely. Yeah, that definitely. Can a data frame have a column that is a matrix? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Column that is a matrix. I, I don't think so on that one, but now I'm not sure. Maybe? I, I thought it's possible. It just has to have the same length as the other columns? Have a column that is matrix. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look at Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I think it can have, right? You can make a list array. You can make a matrix. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're totally right. You can make a list array by dividing dimensions to a list. You can make a matrix, a column of a data frame. And creating a new data frame. Cool. I so you can really make the list like uh, like the dimensions of an array, so that you don't have the list as uh, <laughs> like you can have two dimensional list then. Yeah, I remember we were also asking about this. What the difference between like an n dimensional array versus a matrix was? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what we. <laughs> on. <laughs> I remember having this conversation with this chapter. Um, oh, well, okay. what, how do tibbles behave differently from data frames? They're, they're what was it, loud, yeah. <laughs> needy. Um, they, he had like a saying for it. Tibbles don't have row numbers, right? No, no row names. Um, they don't convert. Uh, characters to factors. Yeah, they don't call. And they have enhanced method for printing. Yeah, they have the pretty print method. Yeah, you, and because, you know, the print method for Tivo is different from the print method, you know, for R. Yeah, it, you can customize the way you print. So the print for Tivo is enhanced print method. Can we like, I've never checked, I guess probably I could. I always hate that tibbles print like the top five rows. Like if you use the data table package, it will print you like the top five and the bottom five. Yeah. And then it'll show the whole thing. Like I hate how tibbles also cut off the columns at like however large your screen is. So you can, yeah, you can specify that with print method for the tibble, the enhanced print method. Mm -hmm. You can, yeah. You can do whatever you want with that. Because okay. I'm always, I have this really terrible tendency that I'll call as data table at the end of something just to have it print the data table way because I just find it a lot clearer okay. and it shows all of the columns rather than yeah. like first eight or whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, I should I should customize that. Yeah, so. I don't know how it is. I, I never really worked with tables, but for like data points, I always use cable. cable? And then you can, so if you use Markdown and render it as an HTML, you can also like have scrollable uh, tables with cable, which is quite cool. Can I do something like, is it penguins? There's no package called penguins? What is it called, the penguins package? Polymer penguins. Um, right, like, oh, this is a bad example. Um, See, there's three more variables, and that always drives me crazy. Whereas, if you do it as the data table print, oh, I don't have tidyverse. It shows everything, and then it shows you the top five and the bottom five, which I always found a better way to print. Yeah, which one is this? This is if you do it as, so this is the data table package, the way they do printing. Mm -hmm. But I guess, table print, knit print method for trunk mat. Is that something? Sorry, I've just totally. Do you know where we're going? Totally gone off. Okay, never mind. Anyway, something to look into. I'll ask if there's a way we can customize that. Um, chapter four, subsetting. I thought this was a, like a nice and easy chapter. I don't know what you guys thought. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> Quite straightforward. I think it's something we, we do a lot. The result of subsetting a vector with positive integers, negative integers, a logical vector, or a character vector. Ooh. Ooh, very nice. I just taught that on Friday. I uh, did my first uh, workshop teaching. <laughs> that was quite fun, actually. <laughs> did you... Positive hmm? Sorry, Sorry, I realized I skipped ahead. Did you have any, like, ones on the vectors exercises? I was muted. Uh, I did actually. So I had one 3.3.4. 3 what is the which one? Uh, the fourth one, an early draft used this code to illustrate structure. When you print that out, you don't see the comment attribute. Why? Is the attribute missing or is there else something special about it? Hint, try using help. Okay, silly question. What does it do? It just prints one to one to five and not the attribute. Um, I thought I was going to have this <laughs> <laughs> That's not the <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> help! <laughs> Very meta. Um, for historic reason, these names are used when deparsing attributes. But uh, the common not one of them, right? Yeah. Or was that in the text actually? Um, the comment somehow is not shown because it's a comment and not an attribute or something like that? Is it? So if you change it, for example, oops. so um, structure, nothing shows. But if I change it to just, just comment one, it pops right up. Ah, yeah, maybe then that's that something also historically yeah. hidden because it's just a comment and not really an attribute. Yeah. There's so much historical stuff in R. Um, I'm sure it's in every language. It's just like I haven't done a deep dive on another language before. Um, okay, results of subsetting a vector with positive, negative. Um, what's the different? Uh, do we want to go through that one? I, I feel like we, I mean, positive, you get them, negative is dropping them. 
logical, you get the trues, not the falses, character vectors. Um, you get it if, it if it's named. Yeah, you get it if it's named. Yeah. Um, difference between bracket, double bracket, dollar sign. When applied to a list. Uh, that was somehow like, I think the single bracket will return also a list. Yeah, double is the thing inside it. And I'm not actually sure what happens when you. I think so, yeah, you just get the thing in, in this position. And then with the dollar sign, you can grab some subset with oh, this name, right? Name. Yeah. Yeah, you get the name back. Um. Yeah, but then it's a vector. And with the double brackets, was it also a vector or was it still a list? Um. Yeah, is the vector. Yeah, the vector. Like, this is a list. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. When should you use drop equals false? Where is that even in? <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna fail chapter four. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, I think you should use drop false if you want to keep the original structure when subsetting, right? So if you if you subset like a data frame two by three or, or matrix or something and you want to keep that structure, you use drop false. Oh, yeah, like this. Mm. Oh, but when you use tibbles, it anyways keeps the structure, right? Yeah. Oh, this is probably why. Drop equals false. Versus drop argument will be ignored. Oh, okay. You are subsetting a matrix or rare data frame. You want to preserve the original dimension. You should almost always use it when subsetting inside a function. Um, X is a matrix. What does X bracket zero do? How is it different from X equals zero? So the X brackets was the empty subset of it, right? Um, Oh, that just returns everything. That's what it was. But if you assign it to zero, then I think everything in this structure will be zero. Versus, this is just gonna create a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Useful. Um, how can you use a named vector to relabel categorical variables? How can you relabel? Um, and there was like this look up table to me. Yeah. So you basically subset with a named vector and then it's a simple the that you have in the vector that you want to subset become. Uh, no. uh, you subset the named vector with 
a vector and then this will become like here it will become two three one right yeah ah yeah 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 okay that's also very useful actually <laughs> yeah i remember when we read that thinking like oh i should definitely use that yeah. that's very useful <laughs> and now i've forgotten about it um <laughs> I think I used it today actually and I was like ah, I read this in the book somewhere I have to check where it was <laughs> to find out how to do this um, any of the exercises I was Muted again. I wrote down four point two. Two. Um. Do, 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 do. And the second exercise. Why does the following code yield five missing values? Hint. Why is it different from NA real? Whoa. Why does the code yield five? <laughs> <laughs> why is it different from okay. NA? If you use NA real, it will be just one NA, I think. Yeah, and I really I have no idea. I don't get it at all. Neither do I. But I'm also really confused with subsetting with NA. How, how like, what would be the, um, what's the principle behind it? Like, because NA is a logical value. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, I, I really don't get it. <laughs> How does NA work at all? I wonder if it's something like this. And then I'm thinking about the NAs are sticky rule. Not sticky. Mm. They're, they're, they multiply. This is mm -hmm. like, Somewhere in chapter two, it's mentioned, um, but I'm not sure I have an explanation. Sham, any idea? No. <laughs> All right, let's see what the answers people say. Uh, four, four point two. And then I think this is applications. Four point two. Um, Multiple, yeah. Question two. Uh, uh, the, the one for select, selecting multiple elements, 4.1 here. And this one. I feel like maybe this is an old version. Like I think it's like the 4.1 here in the yeah. answers because it's multiple. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. And logical vectors are recycled to the same length as the vector being subset. Ah. Ah, okay. And and they real is an integer, so it's ah, okay. It's basically just subsetting one value that doesn't exist and gives me just one NA. Ah. Ah. I'll just learn something very important. <laughs> Where did you get this uh, answers thingy? <laughs> oh, I think I just Googled like uh, advanced R solutions. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's... Is this, I mean, is this one the first uh, cohort wrote the solution? No, I think it's just random people on the internet who have come together. Because, for example, not all of the exercises here are solved. Ah, I see. <laughs> I think it's, if you, if you Google it, you'll find it. Um, ah, okay. Um, I, I try not to use it unless I'm very, very stumped. And then sometimes still I don't understand the question, their answers. Uh, that one made sense though. Um, okay, control flow. Oh, this was great. This is a great um, chapter. If and if else, we know that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what will the value of y be if x is true? If x is true? Uh, yeah, in the next 
second point. Why if x three? Uh, three. <laughs> uh, if x three. is false. No. Null. No? I think it's null. No. no. Yeah. And then if x is ne, probably ne would be my guess. <laughs> Um, should we check? Oh, we could, we could just check here. Nah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, there's an error. And when now uh, the F statement will throw an error. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, because it's not, it's not something conditional, right? I guess, but I would have thought that if, if like, this is illogical. No. It would still work on. It would still work on it. Oh, right. You can't do that. <laughs> I tried to do help on if before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it turns an error. I guess that's just a function of the if control flow. That's cool. No, it's not a function, right? It's not a function. No, it's control flow. That was yeah. like my my question last week about um, how to use the try except. And I had been kind of thinking of it like, oh, I, I also didn't know until I read this chapter that R had a switch, switch uh, control. <laughs> okay. You just know it from Shiny. I think in Shiny you can also use it. It's quite handy. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that like, I think Python has a switch. Yeah, I, sure. Every programming language has switch. I don't know why I thought R didn't have a switch. I was like, oh, R doesn't have a switch. <laughs> Every programming language has a switch. Um, switch X, X probably returns what? Nah? Uh, no. Two. This pull through. So you don't have a value at the X, then you take the next value. Uh. Ah, okay. Um, what what will it return? So it returns two because of fall through. Ah, okay. I'm not sure about that. Traces <laughs> switch. Um, ba, 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 ba. I cannot imagine ever wanting to. Yeah, of course. C switch. I can't ever imagine wanting to do this just because for me at least the readability of that would be so low. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure there's reasons for it. Um, any of the exercises you liked or were stumped by? Uh, five. I have one in 5.3, the first one. <laughs> what, why does this cause? code succeed without errors or warnings. Okay, so X is a numeric, out is a bad. Yeah, because um, X is basically null, right? Yeah. So X and then is you have a loop from one to zero? It goes down, doesn't it? If you go yeah. one to zero. Yeah. And your your out vector or the list should also have the length zero. So X um, and then out. Yeah, and then I think what this does actually. I think this goes. Yeah. One zero, right? Yeah, one zero. Yeah. And then basically what you're doing when you say out one, um, X one. But what will be out zero? Let's see, out zero is just a blank list. Uh, okay. Um, 
So you can basically also subset with a zero and then you get the... I think you can just get the type is what happens when you subset with zero, if I remember properly. Ah, okay, interesting. <laughs> I think so. You're basically just let's see. So you take a zero length thing, a zero length thing. You go the first object, which was out one, is null. You assign it to be okay. and then you're basically. That's a good question. What is this even doing? I'm sure you did this as well. Um, you just get Nas? Yeah. I'm not totally sure why that doesn't necessarily fail. Why does this code with succeed without errors or warnings? Any any guess, Tom? Okay. Let's let's see. Five point one? Five point three. Oh, nobody answered it yet. Yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> if we're feeling very clever, we can go answer it. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I think we got this fall through. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many quiz answers on functions. I think this is where the functions environments got a little bit away from us. Um, what are the three components of a function? Input, output, function? <laughs> um, no. uh, the, the middle one, what is the middle one? The <laughs> input um, statement or what? Is uh, the body sort of? Yeah, body, maybe body, body. yeah. And the environment um, and the arguments, I think. What is the difference between a body and environment? Is the body all of the code you run and then the environment is the fresh like thing you create each time you call the function? Yeah, yeah, I think body is really just the plain code, the raw mm -hmm. code. Environment is the place where it's running. So, yeah. What does the following code return? Um, what would that be? 11, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how would you usually write this code? Oh my God. Yeah, 11, I guess. Right? Yeah, 11. Oh, is it function function? Is it function inside another function? No, oh, it is a function inside another function. But I think it still would take, it would still take um, whatever you, you can find. If you use a global variable of x, right? Yes, it's inheriting from its parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can check the answer. Um, uh, Eleven. Yep, because it's inheriting from the it's the scoping rules. Yeah. What are the three components of the function? What do you say? I forget. Body, argument, environment. Okay. All right. Yep. So body is this stuff here, and then arguments was our x, and then the environment for this function here was this function here, which is why it gave us. 11. Yeah, the must have environment. Hmm? Um, I don't understand the syntax at all. What is that actually doing? Uh, this is just a different way of writing the, so it's basically writing the infix function as a pre prefix function. So you could 
you have the plus usually, um, and then you have the argument before the plus and after the plus. Um, but you can also write it in this with the spec takes mm -hmm. and the arguments in the in the brackets. Yeah. Because you'd actually one, mm -hmm. one plus two by three. Two by three. Yeah. This is called prefix, right? I think this writing is called prefix, and if you the usual infix. way of plus would be as infix. Uh, okay, so usually it would be what um, one plus one plus two times three in the more normal way of writing code. Yeah. Oh. I hope we get to make our own infix functions later. Um, how do you make this call easier to read? But uh, I mean, what is the essence of writing this? I mean, in code, I think, I don't know, right? Using prefix, does Sorry? it make it? I mean, writing in prefix, why, why do we do that? My guess is he showed us this here because probably in a later chapter, we're gonna learn how to write custom Infix functions would be my guess. Um, uh, maybe. Or also just to show that it's possible to um, write every function also as a infix, prefix function. But for the readability, this kind of function is easier if it's infix. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine us ever wanting to write code like this, but at least now we know it's possible. <laughs> um, I can make this call easier to read, speaking of. Um, what? I mean, I'm guessing this is done by, by, let's see. I don't know off the top of my head what means orders are, but you could use the actual names um, so, so the true would be for the trim? Yeah, that's a bit funky. I would have guessed that it was for NA remove. Yeah, me too. Let's see, so comma x true NA remove call step step. Um, How does it make it is because the first argument here is is nothing. Is so x is actually the first argument, and then the second argument was left empty, and then the third is na remove. So this third would be true because um, the first is just put on in the back, and the second then is moved basically to the first, but it's kept empty, empty, and the third would be. Oh good. yeah. Oh, that's very complicated. <laughs> How can you make this call easier to read? Just, just use the names. I don't know. Yeah, just use the names or put the yeah x in the first place and then use the name. Um, does the following code throw an error when executed? Why or why not? Uh, it shouldn't, right? Because B is never called, right? Yeah, B is never called. Yeah. And then there was a there was a phrase for that. Um, lazy? No. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Hmm. It's, okay. Is it lazy? There's there. He used some kind of phrase for like functions only call things when they're needed when you're building them, but I don't oh. remember exactly. Lazy evaluation. Ooh. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, I that, yeah, I usually forget this stuff. How do you, how does one remember this kind of things? <laughs> well, lazy, lazy evaluation is a funny word, so <laughs> I'm lazy, the evaluation is lazy. <laughs> what is our function? <laughs> um, oh my gosh, promises. Or less commonly, a thunk. <laughs> I'm, 
I'm always excited whenever we read these things that are like, we'll come back to this later. Because when I did environments and then looked back on what it said in chapter two, I was like, oh, actually, yeah, it does make more sense to me now. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so, no. What is an infix function? Oh, vectix. <laughs> or... Uh, it's like the, the plus, minus, all those that are in between two arguments. How do you write it? Um, how do we write one? The way you write mathematical equation is infix naturally, right? Yeah, but I think we can assign new ones. Like if we wanted to say this was a new infix function, you can do it. But I don't remember how. Not like that. Um, I think you also have to use the, the back ticks and then yeah. the, like, ah, I think how you write them is how you would write, like you, yeah. we had before the prefix uh, version of the infix function. So you also have the arguments of it in the brackets then. Like, so like this. <laughs> No. Um, oh my gosh. Let me just look this up. Um, I guess you define it with a function, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, X, Y. Function X, Y. Is X plus Y. Plus. I have a menu. Uh, okay. Wow. Five. Um, and do I need the ticks? Unexpected symbol. Maybe not. No? Not like this? Okay. Um, what did we do wrong here? But I'm not sure if the how we write it is um um meant for the infix function or the re replacement function. Let's see, this is... Question, there was something about replacement function as well. Functions that replace values by assignment. They actually look like prefix functions. Modify names in place and have special name. They must have arguments named X and value and must return the modified object. I definitely don't remember this part of this chapter. Um, hmm. You have the little arrow in the name of the function and then you have the assignment arrow. Oh. Oh, okay. Funky. Okay. Hmm. I guess this would be something we could find useful when we're getting to like building object-oriented stuff. Like building our own infix functions and creating our own replacement functions. Yeah. They act like they're modify arguments, but of course they create a modified copy. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Um, what is an infix function? Um, so you write it with backticks and you write it with backticks in an arrow. How do you ensure the cleanup action occurs regardless of how a function exits? Use on exit. Exiting a function by calling return. I never use the implicit ways of returning a value. I always find it like very scary whenever I do implicit code because I always imagine myself reading it and like, three months time and being like, I have no idea what this was meant to do. 
Um, explicitly exit handlers. Sometimes a function needs to take temporary changes to the global state. Is it stored? On exit. Oh, that's kind of useful. I guess. I didn't know you could do that. Um, Just say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess this is one nice way to like always force something to happen with your function. Um, I swear I attended that meeting. Um, but you might have read them and forget. <laughs> yeah. I know, but like functions was like three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. So which chapter, I, I, I attended the last one, uh, environment only. So where did you guys stop? Uh, basically, we've stopped at conditions. Um, conditions, okay. Yeah. And then I don't think anybody's volunteered for functionals yet. If someone wants to volunteer for it. Yeah, you're going to do that. I, I can also do that i have no idea what functionals are but i can i mean i have a weak time <laughs> <laughs> um okay did you have questions with the did you have a good like exercise question for this one yeah a lot but maybe it makes more sense that i check these uh, the solution thingy um and if then i still have some something that's not super clear i can ask again and we can go yeah. through the rest of the quiz questions. We're also really lucky because we've had cohorts ahead of us, so we can ask them and they usually help us. Um, okay. Um, environments. Yeah, you, we should score 100%. You're <laughs> gonna go. <laughs> yes, environment. Three ways an environment differs from a list. <laughs> They're unordered. <laughs> Everything needs a name. Um, <laughs> What else like copy on no 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 copy on modify modify in place and then, <laughs> four right um it can contain itself yeah cool <laughs> so next week is gonna be functional functionals yeah next week functionals uh, okay um what's the parent of the global environment i think um right now i need to go yeah we can yeah, I guess it's already 7.30. Um, uh, uh, so maybe I can catch you next week. Yeah, let's do functions next week, Anne, if you want to do it. Uh, yeah, I, I can try. So the, um, it should be done in the, the Sharingan slides, or? Yeah. Yeah, as I should know. <laughs> it's, it was a lot easier to... Um, do than I thought it was going to be. But the learner? Yeah, that's what I tried to do, the Learn R tutorial. Basically, it's like it allows you to have interactive code, except I didn't do it very well. Um, <laughs> Which, one? Which one? Sharing gun? No, 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 no. The one I tried for doing it was the Learn R package. Uh, uh, well, you, you, you did that one yourself? Yeah, I sort of did it um, for environments. Oh. It was sort oh. of learner-ish. Okay, I didn't know you did. <laughs> That's what Darren did. Um, and I was like, that's a good way to do it. Um, but then you also basically write the whole script with that, or is... It's like a it's like an R markdown with extra functionality. And then it allows oh. you pre presenting you to like type in the code. But you okay. can also do Iron Gun, which is, I think, the same thing where it's just an R markdown with extra functionalities. Yeah. I'll check that out. <laughs> Which one? Sharingan or Lana? Lana. <laughs> uh, I guess Sharingan, I tried already something, but. Um, yeah. Learner, but... I haven't checked out at all yet. So. Okay, cool. Cool. Um, this is great. I feel like I remembered things <laughs> and learned. <laughs> all right. Okay, see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>